Welcome. So what I'd like to do is go over a little bit of summary um, of the process of solving one-step equations, as well as kind of go over some uh, tips and tricks, as well as some common mistakes that uh, you might have endured in throughout the course, or as well as as you work through your homework or on other tests. So first of all, let's kind of go through the process of solving one-step equations. Even though a lot of times solving one-step equations, you can probably do them in your head. Um, it's very important that you follow along through the process. And what we want to do is identify the variable that we're trying to solve for and look and see what operation is being applied to that variable that we need to undo. And we apply the inverse operation, the operation that undoes what's happening to the variable, to both sides using the property of equality so we can get an end result of a variable equal to a value. And that's going to be what's going to make the original equation true. So some, help, some kind of tips and tricks when you're working through variables. Um, what I think is sometimes helpful, a lot of times students will still get kind of confused. They'll see those x's, and it doesn't really automatically click always with them. So what I've kind of found was helpful was circling your variable. That, it, that's the variable I want to get by itself, right? I want to isolate that variable. So circle it and say, I need to get this by itself. Right now, it's being multiplied by 3. So I'm going to have to divide by 3 on both sides to solve. So sometimes just kind of adding something else in there to help you solve. Um, can work. The next thing is writing down your steps. I know some of you could say 3 times a number equals 21. Oh, that number 7, right? And it seems so simple. But when, solving one step equations is just the basics. We're about to get into much more complicated um, linear equations, and then even later getting into quadratics. Um, so it's very important for one for you to understand what exactly you're doing, as well as if you make a mistake. If you write down the steps as well as write down your properties of equality or your op inverse operations that you're using, it's easy for you as well as your teacher to be able to identify where you're making that mistake. I know it's more work, but it'll help you out. So writing down the steps. If you're dividing by 7, you, know, you write down dividing by 7, right? Division property of equality. So therefore, you know exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it. The next thing is kind of an isolated example of um, something helpful. A lot of times, students usually get multiplication, addition, and subtraction. But the one that usually always gets them is x over 5 equals 2. Because they, always, they hate fractions. They just see a fraction, or, and they see x over 5, and they're like, I don't know what to do. But again, when we look at this, x is being divided by 5. So just multiply by 5 on both sides. However, we've also looked into um, fractions. When we multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, that takes us to 1. So what also might be helpful is to rewrite the 5 in front of the x as under 1. Therefore, we can see 1 fifth times x equals 2. These are equivalent, the exact same. A lot of times, some students just might like to write multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. And that might be easier for them to see rather than multiplying by 5. I don't know. It's a tip. Sometimes it works for some students, not for alls. The next thing is the symmetric property. We're going to be solving one-step equations on both, or with variables on both sides of the equation. So it's very important if you solve an equation and you have you know, 3 equals x, for you to understand that that is the same thing as x equals 3. But the thing that gets, us, gets me with the symmetric property is <clears throat> students have a tough time with subtraction. And this is where it gets a lot of students. When we're looking at subtraction with the symmetric property, we know that 3 plus 4 is equal to 4 plus 3, right? And that's even going back to the re reflexive property, one side is equal to the side. But the order that we are adding them in does not matter, right? Um, however, for, for, addition, or for addition, it doesn't matter. For multiplication, it doesn't matter. But for division and subtraction, it does matter. So when we're solving equations, you know, students usually don't have a problem solving a one-step equation like this. But if I say negative 7, plus x equals 14. They do sometimes have a problem because they see the negative sign, and, but they also see the addition sign. So they say, well, I'm seeing addition, so I'm going to want to subtract. But again, what we want to do is rewrite this. So therefore, my variable is in front. So really, x plus 7 is the exact same thing as x minus 7. So it's very important for us to be able to make sure we rewrite them in the order that we can see. Because really, we don't write a positive sign in front of the x. But the x is positive. There's no um, negative sign in front. So it's the positive value. We just don't write it when it's all the way to the left. So a lot of times it would be helpful to use that symmetric property, especially for subtraction, to be able to write the problem, um, to write the problem over there where the x is um, all the way to the left of your variable or if on your right side. And then again, 
A lot of times we always like to have the variable to the left hand side. Um, so you can just apply a symmetric property to switch it around. Um, but there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the course and I will look forward to you in the next one. Thanks.